Does God work through the arts to impact lives? Romans 1.20 says, For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, that men are without excuse. He's a fiction writer, and she's an artist, author, and speaker. Together, they are honoring the Lord with their talents in visual arts. Stay tuned to hear their stories and how they are making a difference for his kingdom. Welcome to the Everlasting Love Program. I'm your host, Barbara Karpuzian, and it's wonderful being with you. You know, as always, we want you to know that God loves you with an everlasting love. He sent his son to the world. It says in John 3.16, you know, many of us see those signs at sporting events. Well, that, uh, that sign, John 3.16, is... For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, and whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. And you don't need a lot of fancy words. You can just come to him as you are and um, recognize just your own weaknesses, your own shortcomings, and just say, Jesus, I believe that you're God and that you came into the world to die for me so that, so that those sins, those weaknesses uh, in my life can be forgiven. And not only that, but you rose again on the third day so that I uh, can spend eternity with you so that when my life is up here, I know that there's, there's hope beyond this and it's called eternity. Um, and we want to encourage you that if you do that, if you invite him to be the Lord of your life, that you would find a good church, that you would find a Bible study, get yourself a Bible study, start praying, start talking to him, get in touch with us. We can connect you with um, a church or a Bible study or even pray for you. Uh, and we always look forward to doing that. I want to share a scripture with you that comes from Ephesians 2.10. And it says, for we are God's masterpiece, and he has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. And I thought about that scripture because of the topic of our program today. You heard at the opening um, that we have some artists with us on the program. And um, I wanted you just to think that the greatest artist is God and um, that he calls us a masterpiece <laughs> and um, I wanted to make that correlation and uh, now introduce our guest. I think it's a good segue to introducing our guest today and so to my right here which I don't know might be to your left but to my right here is Lynn Zook Lloyd uh, and she's an artist and an author and a speaker and um, she's going to be sharing, and not just sharing, but showing um, uh, her art. She's going to be sharing about her art and showing some of her art and how God uses art to draw people closer to Jesus. Did you think, uh, did, you, did you ever think, right, that, wow, I, you know, God can use my art, uh, my artistic abilities? Well, of course he gave them to you. And so he wants you to leverage them for the kingdom. And right next to her is her better half. I don't know, is she your better <laughs> yes. half? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Paul <Older. laughs> uh, Lloyd. And Paul is a Christian who writes for the secular market, and he's written novels. That It's interesting because his novels fall into to the horror and thriller genres and I guess I'll have him explain how that even can be used for the kingdom because a lot of times when we think about horror and thrillers although there is horror and and and, and thrilling stuff in the Bible yes, there too, is. right 
Uh, so welcome to the program, the both of you. Well, thank you. Thank and you. And yes, they are a husband and wife <laughs> team. Married for 46 years, still looking good, still uh, <laughs> serving um, the kingdom of God. So welcome. Thank you. Thanks. So before we look at some of your art pieces and talk about art, and then you've got these books that you brought uh, with you, I want to ask you quickly just to share a little bit of your, your faith journey. So mm -hmm. can we start uh, with you, Len? Uh, yes, yes. Um, I grew up in a family where my mom believed in Jesus, my dad did not. And so, like, which parent do you follow, this one or that one? And then in my late 20s, I got in, in a desperate situation where I really needed help and called out to the Lord for the first time, and I heard him for the first time. Oh, so he, you called and you heard. Yes. So people can actually hear Jesus. Yes. Okay. Yes. I, I lived alone, <laughs> and I had a job where then I ended up working alone, and I was just too much loneliness. I said, what do I do? And he goes, go home. Wow. And what I didn't know is my dad was worried about me. And I thought I would disappoint him, but here he was actually worried about me and concerned. And so my faith is two parts. Then I believed in God. But it wasn't until many years later um, that Jesus became real to me and we were going to a church. So and you were married now at this point. Yes. So you had this experience mm -hmm. when you were younger and dad wor was worried about you. Yes. You didn't realize that and mm -hmm. then you went home and so that was an answer to his prayer probably. Yes. Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was, yes. Okay. Um, and so now, fast forward, uh, how many years you are married to this man? How many years was that? Oh my, probably about 10. 10 years. <laughs> it was a long time. Okay. Um, and we were going to a church and, um, and I told the pastor, I said, you know, I believe in God, but I'm not too sure about Jesus. And he said, well, come anyway, join anyway. And we did. And then I met this one friend who was, uh, became a good friend, but she was always like burdened and sad and feeling, you know, carrying heavy weights. And uh, one day she came to church and she's smiling and happy. And I'm like, what happened to you? She goes, well, I threw out a fleece to the Lord and uh, said if he healed me of asthma, I would believe in him. And he did. And wow. she did. And okay. <laughs> and so I'm like, whoa, this is, this is amazing. And she continued to be happy, dis happy despite the problems that she was having. Um, and so I'm thinking, you know, what's missing from my life is joy. And she had this joy. And so I asked the Lord, I said, if Jesus Christ is real, make him real to me. Mm. Good question, or and good, yeah. Yeah, and so I started going to Bible study with her and hanging around with other people, went where she went. And six months later, mm. <laughs> I woke up one morning and I just sort of knew he was real. And there was no big, you know, nothing real that people would call exciting, except by the end of the day, I just knew in my heart mm. that Jesus was real. And he's been real ever since. That's, that's incredible. What, a, yeah. what an amazing revelation. And I, I, love, I always love to hear these stories because God is just so intimate and personal. Yeah. He knows our personalities. But you were seeking. Yes, um, and I and the Bible says right. If you seek me, you'll find me. If you search for me with mm -hmm. all your heart, I just mm -hmm. read a statistic that about sixty-eight percent or so of Americans um, actually claim to be Christian, and um, but I think there are many who are. I go to church, or yeah, I believe in God, but then that next question is, well, what do you really believe? Right, and so you came to that place where you really believe. Yeah, and yeah. I can't. No one can tell me Jesus isn't real. Uh, he's he's been so real to me. It's it's amazing. That's incredible. Well, thank you for sharing that. So, Paul, what about you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was not a believer um, as a young man, and. Uh, Lynn and I were married uh, at this time, early in our marriage, we weren't going to church together, although Lynn was um, believing in God at that time, uh, as she explained. And um, 
our, when our daughter was born, Lynn had injured her back at some point and uh, wasn't able to pick up the baby. And so I would take the baby and I'd place it on a desk in our bedroom and then she could nurse the baby because the height would be perfect for that. And so that meant I was up for the two o'clock feeding along with her. Uh, and uh, so uh, this one night, she's nursing, I'm laying in bed, I'm resting because I know I gotta get up later and pick up the baby. And very clearly this voice comes and, and I know it's God. When God talks, you know it's God. You know, it's, I didn't know it was Jesus, but it was God. And so uh, he said, get up and rub Lynn's back. And I said, no, I just <laughs> laid down. And Sounds typical. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> typical guy, right? I ain't gonna do that. <laughs> and uh, uh, then he said it again, repeated it again. And I said, oh, all right. But I'm not gonna tell Lynn because she's gonna think it's a miracle or something. So I just got <laughs> up silently and I walked over to where she was nursing and I rubbed her back. I knew where her back was at its source point. And uh, then I went back to bed and laid down. And uh, later she's like, what happened? What did you do to my back? <laughs> and she was healed. That's incredible. So, yeah. And you were not a professing Christian at that time. No, I, I would. You might say I was a foxhole Christian okay. or something. Like if I was in some kind of trouble. Sure. That that's a military term we would okay. use. You know, when you're in deep trouble, you okay. believe the rest of the time it's like, nah, it's okay. Uh, and so it wasn't until years later that uh, I joined a church and uh, okay. God kind of dragged me kicking and screaming. And some people have this big revelation and some people got the, God wants you, Jesus wants you. Yes. He's not <laughs> going to let you go. And that was my, my story. That's incredible. So you both kind of had something similar in that God spoke to you, like mm -hmm. go home. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And yours was go rub your back's, your <laughs> wife's back. Yeah, go rub Lynn's back. <laughs> yeah. And this was before you were professing Christians, and then, yeah. and then you know, the, and apparently the Lord revealed Himself to both of you in this like non-dramatic uh, way, and you're both serving the Lord and believers, and that's wonderful. Yeah. Wow, okay, so uh, let's talk about art. Okay. And how art became something important in both of your lives, and did you both have this talent, desire early on in your relationship? Whoever wants to go first. Well. Uh, I knew I was a writer very early on. I, I actually won a prize in eighth grade for uh, a writing uh, contest. Uh, it was just a little, uh, we were going to Catholic school at that time, mm -hmm. and it was a little contest they ran. And, and I was always writing. So yes, I knew that. But if you had asked me as a teenager, what do you want to be when you grow up? I, I didn't know. But uh, when I was in the Army, I was doing some writing when I had time and uh, made the decision at that point to go, go to college, English literature major, and, and become a writer. That was, became a firm goal. Okay, and then how did you use that writing throughout the years? Yeah, um, I, first I was a newspaper reporter for a daily newspaper in okay. King of Prussia, Pennsylvania, today's okay. Post. Okay, oh, so you're, are you originally from Pennsylvania? Oh, yes, uh, we didn't say that. Oh, We're from, I'm from the okay. Philadelphia area. Okay, she's, all right. Yeah. Okay. And um, so then from there I was hired by a major international consulting firm and uh, they were, uh, developing communications materials for companies to tell people about their compensation programs and their benefits programs. And so I would write the, at those days it would be a slide deck, but it became video eventually. And uh, we, I would write the videos. And um, okay. uh, then we, we started, Lynn was in the advertising world and 
we started our own business at one point. And okay. I started writing. Uh, I was probably half in the video script writing business and half in the print, uh, advertising, print media, PR kinds of uh, okay. writing. Okay. Uh, well, and so we're going to hear more about how that evolved into what you're, you know, what you're doing today. And sure. but I, I want to hear from uh, Lynn and sort of where that. Uh, comes into your life and I was just thinking about our Catholic school education yeah. and how conjugating verbs or, <laughs> yes. and, 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 and diagramming sentences yes. and all of that. Well, I could was probably such a diagram plus. a sentence if right you now me. I could yeah. do it right now. Yeah, let's right? Do it. All the parts of speech and everything. <laughs> so we were we're grateful for that that great education, right? So so yeah, tell us, um, Lynn, what about you? art in your life? Well, from a little girl on up, I always wanted to be an artist. Okay. Uh, but then I was told by my parents that, well, you have to make a living and pay yeah, the bills. Of course. So um, I ended up going into graphic design. Okay. And then into advertising. And But my heart's desire was to illustrate and to paint. Okay. And, um, and you know, I did graphic design and people said I was good at it, but it wasn't my heart's desire, something was missing. And so at the turn of the century, at the year, you know, 2000, <laughs> <laughs> I said to the Lord, I said, you know, I want to give my life to you and I want to give you my talents. I want to work for you, God. Mm. You know, I'm tired of designing stuff for other people so they earn more money. I want to wow. work for you. Wow. Um, and everything just changed. Everything just totally changed. And that's when I got into. Um, I told him I wanted to, to do art for him, and then he had me start writing books first <laughs> and illustrating them, okay. and then get into painting. So then let's 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 segue into that. So oh, okay. Tell us what changed. Show us, you know, s some of what you have here as well as Paul. We want to we want to see it. We want to hear about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I gave my life to the Lord, and at that time, Paul and I had started some uh, listening prayer. And it was interesting, we, we would sit quietly and ask the Lord to speak to our hearts. And we found out we, not to ask God what He wanted, because He tells you what He wants anyway. <laughs> and at first, Paul was getting these little pictures and he would kind of scribble them down. And I was getting the words. And that actually led into the books. Okay. It's just the, the, the quiet well, time of the Lord. Well, show us one of your books. Can you grab um, one of those? and? or whatever one you want and... Well, this one um, on Eagle's Wings, I'm going to show this one because this is the one Paul and I did together. On Eagle's Wings. Yes, okay. and what it is, it has writings um, that he did and then I did and then I illustrated the pages. Mm -hmm. And so it's the insight that we received from the Lord, you know, as Beautiful. we were... Uh, yeah. listening yeah. and so we put it into a book together. Okay. And so that was a fun joint project. Yes. And then he would give me ideas and I would just write them down and uh, or give me an idea for a picture. Sometimes I'd get the words first, sometimes the picture. And that just evolved into books and then he got me into painting. Um, so now were you, you were publishing these, you were self. selling these, self-published, mm -hmm. selling these. How did you integrate them into the church? Well, at first, I wasn't selling them, I was just creating them. Creating them. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. then he had me start painting, and then I could never speak in public. Paul could, he's a ham, but I <laughs> could not. And then the Lord had me start painting. He said, now take these pictures and start telling people about God's love. So you were not comfortable speaking in public, is that what you mean? Not until the Lord okay. told me. <laughs> and, <laughs> and once I had a picture, I found out I could talk, oh. and then, because Jesus is real now, I found I had something to say. Okay. I couldn't talk in public before because I had nothing important to say. Okay. And so then I would start going around to different, like, you know, spiritual breakfast and luncheons or women's groups and talk, show the paintings, and put out my books. And that's how I started selling books okay. uh, through speaking. Okay. And that so we're at, we actually have some of your paintings here in the studio, and I don't know how they'll capture, but I think we can see it there. Mm -hmm. we have, so are these both your paintings that yes. are here? Okay. Yes. So they you are. would take so you would take one of these paintings and you would begin to share about the painting in a way that was ministering to people or yes, give I, us an idea, an example of okay. that. Okay, the ones I take around are larger than this. They're three by four feet. They're big ones. Okay. And the first one was called Breakthrough. 
and it was some flowers trying to break through a barrier and it was to show people that there's all this beauty he puts within us that he wants to come break through mm. but it's hidden because there's and had dark clouds because we're scared of the dark clouds oh maybe maybe the economy is just falling apart or maybe we lost our job um, and but then there's a there are clouds at one end that showed God's love coming down into the beauty he placed in us to encourage us to break through the barriers mm. that hold us back. So it was all on encouraging people to, using art as pictures, to break through the barriers holding them back and showing them the beauty within them. Wow, that's and, incredible. Uh, yeah, and then other paintings for other reasons, but that's how he got me started. And that one painting went around probably to more places than others because I kept getting invited to speak. Well, and most people are visual. Yes. So having that yes. visual component there and then sharing the word mm -hmm. uh, can be very powerful, right? Yes. So do you yes. still do you still paint at your church? What does are you, Yes. Yeah, what does that look like? Okay. Uh, the angel back here is one I painted the week before Christmas. It was when the angel came to the shepherds to announce, you know, that Jesus was born. Um, so that one I painted live during the service, which I love to so do. So they allow you to do that? Yes, yes, yes. during the whole, entire service, which from the worship through the pastor preaching. Um, and they said I could paint anytime I want as long as what I start has to be done by the end of the service. Why? So people can see the complete picture. Oh, so you're like listening to the sermon and you're yes. painting. Yes as the Lord inspires you? Well, no, uh, actually. Okay, <laughs> come on, correct no, it's, me. <laughs> it's an amazing journey that um, when I first saw people painting at conferences and worship services, I started talking to people. I'm like, this sounds cool. I would like to do it. How do you do it? And I found out some people just would put up a canvas and paint, but others would find out ahead of time what the topic is. Mm. Pray, Lord, what do you want? And they would journey. Mm. And their art just really touched me deeply. So what I do is I ask the pastor, well, what are you going to preach on like a week ahead of time? And then I say to the Lord, okay, here's the topic, here's the scripture. What do you want me to do? Wow. What size canvas? What style? How do you want it to look? And then because it has to be finished at the end of the service, what I have to do is decide what parts need to be painted ahead of time and covered up so I can get the others done. That's, that's incredible. By the end. And to me, it's the most exciting journey with Jesus because I get to journey with him during the week in, in trying to put this picture together. Mm -hmm. And so by the time I paint on Sunday, it's like icing on the cake. Mm -hmm. And it's just. And, and what do you do fun. with the painting once it's complete? Well, then, oh, this is interesting. Then the Lord usually has a journey for the paintings, too. I take them to different places or. Uh, different events and show them and um, which leads back to the mountain painting which I did not paint that one at church that one I painted after we finally got to Seattle to visit our son out there and we got to see Mount Rainier mm. and I was so in awe of the Lord seeing this big mountain and all the mountain ranges so I, I just had a paint a painting that just put me in awe of the Lord and so after I painted then um, at our church, we have an art wall at Vineyard Church of DuPage in Wheaton. And, um, an art wall? Yes, it's, okay. it's a nine foot area, and every month I, I got put in charge of it, I get to put different artists up. And so for Christmas, that was part of the artist display. Like, you know, come, was it come tell it on the, no. Come tell Go it on tell the mountain. Go tell it on the mountain, it. yeah. Go tell it on the mountain. So that painting was there, and then, a couple of weeks ago, we had the opportunity uh, to do an open mic at Vicar's Tavern in Warrenville. And uh, so I'm praying, Lord, what do you want me to do for the open mic? And he told me to uh, share a poem I was writing on the great I am, who the great I am is. Mm -hmm. But then he said, make it interesting. Bring the mountain painting, do a little short, short story, go from the mountain painting to segue to the poem and then read who the God is. And that's how he's showing me how to uh, actually get work out into non-believers. Mm. Open mics or gallery shows where I get to put signs near the art. Huh. And then he continued the painting again because uh, I do monthly soaking, listening prayer gatherings at my home. Yeah, yeah. And he tells me what artwork to put up different times. Yeah. And I put that one up. And this lady came and she's looking at it and she's like in tears. 
She goes, wow, the Lord's leading me someplace, but I don't know where. So she looked at the road going over mm -hmm. the picture there mm -hmm. and just related to it. So I'm in awe of the Lord because not only does he give me pictures, he has then a journey for most of, not everyone, but for most of the paintings yes. to go here, 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 and there. And I'm like, yeah. I love it. God's awesome. <laughs> yeah, and I love He's that awesome. you know there's an it's this is a, a, an evangelistic tool, yes. and it's just wonderful how God can use each of us and our personalities um, to evangelize for the kingdom, but it looks different, or yeah. looks differently, right, with each person. And so, mm -hmm. using a painting, using a, a book, storytelling, you know, that kind of thing. So that that's wonderful, Paul. What do you? I, we're going to talk about you know your writing too. But what do you want to say to churches as, as it relates to um, allowing for the arts, right? And I, and yeah. I know that art. When we say arts, that that means a lot of things, yeah. right? So yeah. I mean, we have worship services, mm -hmm. so people who are artistic with their vocal ability and. Um, we have a, you know, in our church, we have a phenomenal, like, visual arts, um, I don't, not production, but they're, like, visual and media arts, but whenever we have events, like, they just do amazing. They, they, they are able to decorate the church and do just, like, you're like, wow, I would never put those two things together. And, and yeah. uh, but, but what would you say yeah. to churches about this? Well, I think if you go back to the Reformation, that's kind of when the church has lost art and uh, it was removed from the church. Uh, Why? Well, uh, the, one of the concerns was the the reformers were concerned that the people were worshiping the statues and not what oh, the statue represented okay. and the same thing with the paintings they would r uh, worship the mary in the painting versus mary the mother of god that that kind not okay. worship mary but okay. honor her uh and so um it's gone for hundreds of years in the reform or pr protestant tradition but we're bringing it back in now because art, as you mentioned earlier, where so many of us are visual learners. Yes. And, and the visual arts bring people uh, the ability to hear the Word of God in a different way, mm -hmm. uh, in a deeper, more meaningful way. Uh, and, and visual isn't just paintings. Visual is when perhaps you have a little uh, theater group that your church might have and and put on little plays from time to time. Um, all of that is very important mm -hmm. to uh, illustrating yes. sermon topics and advancing the kingdom. And the other thing is uh, the arts community it is it it's just seems like it's a tough connection to get from loving to paint, to loving the Lord. And by having it in the hmm. church, that uh, that helps to bring the, you know, feel at home uh, so in what, the church. Why, so why do you think there's that disconnect? Well, I think if you go into a building that has all these pews where you sit, and oh, it's kind of okay. stiff, okay. and there's a guy talking up front or a lady mm. talking up front, uh, it's kind of stale. That mo most people, can get by that, I sure, think. You know, sure. we're going to hear the word and it'll be great. When an artist comes in, it's like, huh? They're seeing places to hang paintings yeah. and they're not <laughs> hanging them. What's wrong with these people? Is it uh, that like abstract random <laughs> thing that's going? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the church is more like concrete sequential, right? Yeah. And they're coming in going like, ah, oh, this is, you know. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Well, so that's that's very it's very interesting that you say that. And you're right. There needs to be place for that. We had a women's event at our church, and someone actually danced oh, to a piece, okay. and so that was beautiful. Exactly. So there are different places where I've seen it uh, in in our church where mm -hmm. poetry has been um, has been shared and mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for uh, for for making that clear for us. So you're not a painter, though. No. Your art is, is different than your wife's. Tell us about your art. Well, I paint with words. You paint with words. That's okay. how we do it, yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, so 
you mentioned that I focus on the horror genre and thriller type novels and short stories too. And uh, maybe back up a second, Lynn, major emphasis, major focus is uh, enriching, enriching the lives of those who already know the Lord. My focus is I'm writing uh, for people who don't yet know the Lord. People who are what we call, in literature, it's called the secular market. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. And they they will read things. And, you know, it's uh, people who read hard literature, it, it has, in most of it, not all of it, but most of it has a kind of a depression. It goes into a very dark place, mm -hmm. and then it often has a very dark ending. And I felt my calling is to go into those deep, dark places, but shine the light of the Lord mm. in them. Not mm -hmm. preaching, not you know doing a lot of Bible quoting, although that can happen, yep. but to show a character or characters who know the Lord and how they respond to the darkness. Okay. Or how a character might come to know the Lord who doesn't uh, okay. And, and can, so that light uh, shines in the darkness. That's okay. that's the key. To so it. most of your work is fictional, then, is that yes. correct? Okay. So do you yeah. have a sample of something? Yeah, with you? sure. Yeah, um, let's let's see some of what you brought. A couple things here. Um, I like the story fulfillment because what I did mm -hmm. is I wanted to take the book of Luke and do the whole book. But I kind of ran into the problem with uh, there's so much between the lines uh, that that to to do it right, uh, this is a whole book, and I never got past the Christmas story. Mm. So it's the Christmas story told, you know, I think Stephen King or somebody might uh, do it. It's a horror story. And, and if you think about the Christmas story mm -hmm. uh, and Jesus is going to come to save the world, What's Satan thinking about? Mm. How do you stop me? You know, Job says he sits in the high councils yes. of heaven. Yes. And so uh, he knows what's coming. Yes. Well, how do you stop Jesus? Are you going to take Jesus on directly? I don't think so. Yeah. You're going to, uh, instead, let's kill the mother. And so this is a story about a young teenage girl, very young teenager, and Satan comes after her. But what Satan doesn't know is Mary has a lot of moxie and she's got connections in extremely high places. Mm -hmm. And that, that breaks the story. So it includes Luke, it includes Matthew, but it, it tells the story. So it's, it's a great book for someone who uh, has a friend. I, I think of Christians who have friends who are not churched and might say, what's this Christmas stuff all about? And he said, here, mm. read this book. This is An interesting this. cover, too. Oh, you know what I really like about this cover? I'm glad you mentioned it. <laughs> I hope I'm displaying this properly. Is, is we're seeing Jesus in the womb. And it's never been done before. And Lynn did it. I thought, this is really cool. <laughs> I love that, yes. Yeah, and because the story, uh, Jesus is not yet born. It's about Mary's story through through yes. the uh, Luke story through the t well you know they're yeah. they're in they're yeah. in uh, Egypt and they come yes. back at the end yes. yeah well and and when I when I'm as I'm listening to you I'm thinking about like all of our lives and the enemy of course is not omniscient uh, but any of us who are believers you know he comes after all of us yes mm -hmm. um, and so it's great that this story ends with victory, I'm assuming. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is about Jesus. It is about Jesus. <laughs> right? But I love it. it says a suspense novel. Because I, I read a lot of Frank Peretti's. Are yeah, you this fits right in that, with that. Yeah, because I, I loved his, I like devoured all yeah. I don't, you know, I think I still have them all on my, you know, shelf. But, uh, but yeah, I loved those stories because yeah. it really kind of, it, it, 
you know, it, it, it got you really engaged and you wanted to know, like, what's going to happen to this town? Or, yeah. You know, what's, yeah. Yeah. So I love that. So now maybe I need to start looking at yours, Paul, because I can't do any more of the Peretti ones. <laughs> well, that. yeah, and the, the thing is, remember, I, I think Peretti was writing for a Christian market. He was. He He's was. a Tyndale House yes. author. Yes. And uh, I'm not. I'm writing for the second. But this yes. one works well in, if you're a Peretti fan uh, in, yeah. in, in that yeah. world. Well, tell us about another one that you but have there. The, I brought this one because it's, it's more typical of what I'm writing. It's pronounced snip critics. Don't be afraid of it. Okay. Uh, it, <laughs> you're writing about monsters, Paul. Uh, yes. <laughs> you're so, a Christian. Wait, what is? what do you have in common with monsters? So, somebody <laughs> asked me, is it, he said, don't you get scared when you're writing these things? <laughs> And uh, I said, no, I'm a Christian. They're afraid of me, like C.S. Lewis said. Um, so um, he's not scary, is he? He's just like <laughs> Well, I don't like, you know, it's, I'm looking <laughs> at that and thinking about my grandson or think, it's like yeah. that they kind of, they like books like this. Yes. This is young adult. Yeah, and, and I, it's a really crossover: young adult and adult fiction. Okay. Uh, what is this it, like a series? And it says book number one. So do you have? Oh yeah, this is a part of a four book series. Okay. All right. And uh, what he's what we're doing here is, is Snip Critics is this teenage alien who crashes on Earth and uh, he stowed aboard his parents, uh, his, actually it was his father's ship, but he's, he is a shapeshifter. And he, so he can shift, he can be male, he can be female, he can do whatever he wants. And usually he doesn't look like this. He looks like you or me, or he's a teenager, so he looks like your typical teenager. Okay. And of course the, the uh, government folks are after him, so he has to change uh, stuff. But what happened as I got to writing the story, I was having, I wanted to have another, a friend of his be the narrator character. Well, the trouble with this is here's a teenage boy, he's going to tell you the story of Snip Critics. He falls in love with this other teenage girl. And oh, now no. all of a sudden, I mean, it's a love story. Now, I, 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 oh, absolutely, you can't have a story without a love story. It's always a love story, and and so uh, instead of running around trying to escape the government people, they one of the girls in the crowd, just in the local high school, goes missing, and the uh, art uh, director, they're on this art club, so it works with artists. And so uh, they go looking for her, and they cross this threshold into another place, and they have adventures there, and then they cross back, and it's the wrong time. So in the first book, they end up in 1923, uh, and they're... So like a time machine thing. It's in kind of too. a time travel yeah, adventure. Yeah. So the whole series becomes this time travel, and it's, I, I think of it, uh, especially for Christians <laughs> who are used to teenagers and road trips with the youth group, this is like the road trip that runs on forever. You know? So what are you hoping that a teenager would get out of reading these? It's sort of redemptive or? Yeah, well, yeah. The, yeah. There, there, there is a redemptive message. You know, things go south and horrible things happen. and. That's, and we have to deal with the monsters in our lives. Okay. But in, in the end, the Lord is with us. And, and these are people who, even though they're from a public high school, and they're going to stop and pray before they go into where, wherever the dark place is that they have to go into to get to where they need to go. Mm -hmm. uh, and there, there's a community that is very much modeling a Christian kind of perspective in that there's love for each other, uh, mm -hmm. they help each other, okay. uh, and they're working together to, to accomplish a goal. Okay. So like there's a set of morals in there? And, yes. Okay, that, so, so the idea yeah. is unlike the broader culture. Which, which might be gory. Well, and we don't, we kind of lost the sense of the values. We're not always sure mm -hmm. what's right and what's yep, wrong. Yep. I mean, we know we don't steal, rob, and shoot people, but 
is this right? Is that thing right? Or are we allowed to do that? And, yeah. And, and then, so in this story, it it's, acts in a very, not preachy way, but acts as a way of modeling uh, good behavior, I guess. Yeah. I mean, nobody, you have to do bad things, so, you know, it's a story. There sure. has to be conflict. Sure. But uh, it does that in a context that, that's within a Christian moral framework. Yeah, great. Wow, and I see you have multiple pieces here, and then you have, you know, and your art pieces. Mm -hmm. Uh, are you doing the illustration for most of his books, or do you just do some? For every book, except for Snip Critics. Okay. Uh, I didn't feel I was qualified to, to uh, <laughs> illustrate <laughs> a monster, and we had a friend who loves doing monsters, yeah, so we hired him. we had an illustrator him. do that, but okay. she did the cover design front and back. Okay, wonderful. Mm -hmm. So, we're talking, for those who might be tuning in even right now, we're talking about how, um, we integrate art into our Christian faith. Um, and I mean, maybe that sounds funny to say integrate because actually God gives all of us giftings and mm -hmm. talents. And so you both have these artistic abilities, a uh, little bit different from one another, but at the same time, you're you're kind of working together. Oh, yeah. and, and so you talked about working together and with the illustrations, how, what are other ways that you kind of work together? Oh, that's a great, I was hoping you would ask that. You were hoping the, I would yes. ask that, Well, okay. we, we were in business together for 30 years yeah. and- And uh, you're still married. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. It's <laughs> for someone <laughs> 46 exactly. years. Exactly. <laughs> uh, and uh, Lynn is our art director and I'm the account executive and of course the copy guy, but I'm, I'm all, I also have some art background mm -hmm. and I serve, I can serve as a creative director. And so Lynn and I will often work together to uh, what, what's this piece of art going to look like? How would it look better? So I, I'm often giving her suggestions and ideas. And she's doing the same thing for me. She's reading my books or I read them to her and she'll comment and say, well, why is it doing that? And I'm mm -hmm. like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What, yeah. what would you like to say to that in working together? Well, we kind of give suggestions for each other. Um, for example, I'll be working or designing something and he'll come and say, hmm, what if you move that from here to here and it just works? He has this eye for design that is just amazing. And I had a recent project where I was hired to illustrate a series of five books, uh, a children's books for somebody. Okay. And, um, and it was supposed to be a lot on showing the love of God, but without saying God, mm. and putting joy and excitement for life. Like when little kids are in awe and wonder of the world, put that into illustrations. And uh, so I would come to him and say, what do you think about this idea? And so we brainstormed together. It's yes. beautiful. And he uh, yeah. gave me some quite yeah. input that I would have not come up with. And so when I see things or places where he can our contest or he can enter his writing, then I tell him. So we kind of look out for each other yeah. uh, and help each other where yeah. we can. Okay. The, the go ahead, go children's ahead. book, that, uh, bo it's a series of books, mm -hmm. was particularly difficult because it wasn't uh, subjective uh, or objective topics. It was kind of ethereal. What would be an example of one of the Topics. Like, why am I here? Yeah, why oh, am I here? Oh, Illustrate yes. why am I here. Yeah. Oh, okay. How do you do that? Yeah, yeah, that's why it took a lot of brainstorming. <laughs> that's called a lot brainstorming, of prayer, yeah. A lot of Jesus help. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, so it was sort of fun illustrating something that didn't have visuals to it. You know, it didn't need a house or a dog or a cat. It was just more of these things, you know. Yeah. You know, why, why did God put me here? Or where do I go from here? Or, you know, or... Can't we get there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The kind of questions, you know, preschoolers might ask mom. Mm -hmm. yes. Now here's a book that helps mom or dad. Yeah, you know, yeah, so. yeah, that's wonderful. Um, so we, we hear, we've heard about what you do. You're seeing some of it, um, you know, hearing that you're both able to, to leverage some of this in the church, which is wonderful, so that you have that outlet for your passion. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the other ways that um, people can be on the receiving end of this, right? Like, 
do you do workshops and presentations mm -hmm. and like what what do, yeah what do you do Yes, yes and yes. Yes and yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I do workshops, I do interactive presentations, I speak. Um, one of the places I took my paintings to was like uh, Elgin and Glow and did a whole interactive oh, presentation yes. there using I art. know Holly very well. Oh, okay, good. Yes. That's <laughs> I'm good, involved yeah. with that ministry as well. So. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. That's wonderful, <laughs> yeah. yes. Uh, and then the Lord has me sending out a monthly free encouragement email with an art and story. Every month I create a piece of art and do a story from the stuff that the Lord's been teaching okay. or pressing on me uh, and send it out to people just to encourage them in their faith. Um, and then I do a blog twice a month Okay. again. Um, and I'll show you this. This is a book called Help, I Need a Hug from God. Mm. And I did a blog, it was a combination of the best blogs for two years where I would have like a picture and then a poem. Mm. And so through blogs and through uh, the emails and workshops and then uh, now, oh, something else we do together. We like to go out now and then to a coffee shop or somewhere in the marketplace and he'll bring his little laptop and he'll write and I'll bring a, a sketch pad and sketch. And it's kind of cool. We'll just be doing our thing and people come over, oh, what's that? I and so here's it. a I'll chance to talk. I'll put a couple books talk. on the table, you know. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. You, you know, that's, that's, that's extra, or, you know, one of the names of God is extraordinary strategist. Yes. You know, it's counselor, but in one of the versions. So God yes. giving you some strategy yes. on how to uh, reach people. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he said to take the arts into the marketplace because there's a part of our brain that responds to like words, a part to visuals, a part to movement. Uh, and you know, if you start, if you want to minister to the whole person, you need the movement, you need the sound, you need the music, yes. you need yeah. the words. And so one time the Lord put on my heart to take a group down to Starved Rock. And I don't know if you've ever been to Starved Rock, but there's a council, an Indian council center down okay. at, at the bottom of it. It's and been it's, a while, so oh, yeah. Oh, okay. It's this huge like cave, or sort of like cave. Canyon, I guess, is the right word. Well, it was a canyon, but, it, but it's sort of like a cave, too, yeah. where the Indians would meet and they would hold their council right, right. there. And the Lord wants his word everywhere. So we took a, took a group down, uh, a writer, an artist, a musician, a dancer, and we went there, and, and I drew, and someone else wrote, and someone else was dancing, and one lady uh, stood there and bellowed out in a beautiful voice, singing a hymn. And all the people hiking below stopped and looked up. Mm. And there was God's name, name being proclaimed outside. Mm. And he wants us in the arts, using all the arts. Yes. And I think we're called to do that more and more. And one thing he put on my heart is to encourage artists to start asking the Lord to paint pictures that have not been seen yet. Mm. Because scripture says, take what is unseen until it becomes seen or pray for it. And what's on God's heart that he wants to be seen that has not yes. yet manifested yet. Yeah, that's so good. I, I just thinking like one of the producers of our program, his name is Tony LaCroix, mm -hmm. and he's a photographer. And um, I, I received a calendar from him uh, for Christmas that had just wonderful photography mm -hmm. in there. I mean, I'm 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 much more concrete, sequential. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I have a little bit of you know, I can be creative, but I but but for there are people who love being creative. For me, it's more of like a chore oh. <laughs> because if I put flowers in a vase, you know, I've got to have two daisies here, two rows. You know, right. I, where I had a friend who would create these amazing gardens, and then he would do these 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 vases and just take random flowers and babies and just do this magnificent wow. presentation of flowers. Um, and he just loved it, and, and he, he would do stained glass and all these, yeah, and so I, lo I, I just, you know, I just, just commend that because that's just not my, you know, my, because I'm too much like, no, you, it's, you can't put that flower in there, <laughs> you know, or don't stroke it, whatever, right? Uh -huh. So how beautiful um, is that? Um, and you, are you doing these workshops oh, like for people sure. who want to write, for yeah. example? I, I have a series of workshops I do for uh, people, and it starts with 
if you're a person who's going to say, I really like to write, but I don't know how to get started, I have workshops I can bring you into and uh, uh, get you going, uh, how to get started, and what That's you wonderful. need to know, you know, what's yeah. literature, what's, what's uh, uh, what they call genre literature, well, how, how does all this break out into different categories, and uh, help someone decide, well, what kind of writing do I want to do? Mm. And, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm kind of in that place. I'm kind of stuck right now because I started writing something, but mine's oh. nonfiction. Mine's a, about a story in my in my family's life, and mm. I don't know like that that tension of like it's got it, because I, you're you're thinking like every word has to be perfect as I'm writing it, yeah. um, and realizing that I just probably should just vomit on the on the paper. <laughs> <laughs> And then <laughs> Us writers don't like to think of it as vomit, but yeah. yes. <laughs> I, 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 I can't think of a, a, a better descriptor, no. but like vomit yeah, on the paper and then go back and figure you're, it you're out. You're writing a memoir is what that's kind called. Of, yeah, yes. it's a memoir. Yes. And uh, there are uh, writer's groups, and there will be writer's group near where you live, yes. That and you can check in with your public library, probably yeah. find them and uh, they welcome people who write memoirs. Yes. And they know you're gonna come in and you'll be there for a time yeah. until you're finished your memoir. And yeah. then they'll help you answer the question, well, now that I got it, what do I do with it? Yeah, yeah. You know, that Maybe sort of I need to do that, because then that would really hunker me down and make me do it, you know? Because yeah. yeah. I think I'm intimidated by the process, yeah. perhaps. Yeah, yeah, one of my tips for writers starting out, they, you know, you got to write every day. What's that mean? And I say, look, find 15 minutes a day before yeah. work or after work. 15 minutes yeah. and write. And just write. And just write. Yeah. And the reason I say 15 minutes is it's impossible to write for 15 minutes. When you start clicking away, ah. you start vomiting. <laughs> you're there 45 minutes later. Okay. Going, oh, I got to go to work. <laughs> okay, so that's kind of the teaser then. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But if you're thinking that, that's a that's something you can grasp and say, oh, I could do 15 minutes. Well, yeah. of course you can. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's good. What I, you know, before before we close out, I, going back to, um, you just really had this passion to want to be able to paint. Um, your parents said, you need to make a living. <laughs> <laughs> just, what are some final words to young people out there who have that similar passion and are tr trying to navigate through that, right? I would say um, never give up your dream. Mm -hmm. Even if you have to take a detour, you know, trust that in the right time you can, uh, your dream will come true. Because even though I spent most of my career as a graphic designer, everything I learned there helped me then to put together books. Mm -hmm. Everything I learned in design helped me to do uh, presentations. I do PowerPoint sometimes to uh, show things. And so none of that other stuff was wasted. Yes. You know, God used it. Yes. Even though it wasn't my heart's desire. Yeah. And so I would tell people, don't give up. You know, if you can pursue while you're doing this job, what you can do over here, that would be fine. But actually we have all eternity mm -hmm. to create, you mm -hmm. know, and to do what we can here on this yeah. earth. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. really good, Lynn. Well, I hope that yeah. you enjoyed that, seeing this artwork, hearing about um, some of Paul's books and these, you know, illustrated publications here. And just a quick reminder of the scripture from the top of the program, Ephesians 2.10, for we are God's masterpiece. We're the great, his greatest piece of artwork. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. God bless you.
God my delight will be to sing to you the only one who knows the tears I have cried every hair on my head when I worship with it sing for all time is better holy 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 is he holy holy is what you're making me holy holy shout to your throne holy holy cause you made me Every hair on my head I want to worship with every breath Like you made me to well, We tried to write some brand new lines But the one we'll sing for all time is better Oh, so much better It's what you're making.